this is an impossible shape but it's possible to draw it, which is what I have done here. And it might be possible to build at least an illusion of it. And if you stare at it long enough, you realize why it's impossible. It does look like it has uh, three right angles, uh, which doesn't really work in the normal sense of a triangle. Um, it's called an impossible triangle or the impossible tri bar or a Penrose triangle uh, because it was not first discovered by Mr. Penrose. Um, actually, the first person to, to conceive of this was called Reutersvad, a Swedish guy. No idea if I've said his name particularly accurately. Tell me if I have. Um, but was made famous by Lionel Penrose and his son, the now famous mathematician Roger Penrose, in about the 1950s. Um, and what I like about that story is that they, they did it independently from the, the Swedish guy, but they also did it because they were inspired by the work of M.C. Escher, the Dutch artist who is famous for drawing and, and cutting into lithographs amazing looking impossible uh, figures. But not this one until they kind of developed it. And then I think they had communication with Escher, who then went on to use the ideas that they developed to make some of his most famous artworks, particularly one about a waterfall. And if you haven't seen it, for goodness sake, go and have a look at it because it's great. But what I thought I should try and do in this video is build an impossible triangle in GeoGebra. Now, I already know how to draw it, as I demonstrated earlier, but I'd like to build it in GeoGebra 3D to see if we can make the illusion much like you'd actually try and make it in 3D if you were going to create an illusion that looked like the impossible tri bar could really exist in real space, which has been done, as you can see in some famous photos, which uh, are all on Wikipedia if you want to look them up. So. Uh, Here's what I've ended up building in GeoGebra, and the rest of this video is me bashing my head against the brick wall, or the impossible brick wall, uh, of trying to build it. Uh, I hope you enjoy. So I want to make an impossible shape in GeoGebra, and despite being called an impossible shape, it's possible. Or at least we've all seen, I hope, photos of people holding these impossible tri bars and famously used by MC Escher in a lot of his uh, impossible style drawings particularly the waterfall one, which is a really nice example of hiding that impossible tri bar in a piece of art. But we've got two options. You can just draw this and from a generation of doodling in various lectures over my time, I think I know how to draw it by hand. I'm doing a 2D representation from a certain perspective of this impossible shape. And it's surprisingly difficult to draw by hand. We could do that, I think, relatively easily using an isometric grid. Or we can actually build it in three dimensions. Obviously, we can't actually build it uh, physically, but if you want to actually build it physically and make it look like it's real, you can get the perspective right and so that the things line up, uh, even if they're not in the same um, plane, they look like they are. And actually, we could do that in Judge for 3D mode and just control the camera position and the perspective. Uh, so that's what we're going to try. And I, uh, I don't know really how easy this is going to be, but it's got to be it's got to be possible. So I'm going to turn on the 3D graphics mode. Uh, I've turned on accidentally the second graphics mode. I don't really need that. Um, I might leave the first graphics mode open to have some buttons on and stuff, and eventually I'll probably pop out the algebra view, but let's just leave it all like this to start with. And the first thing to realize is that I think the perspective is going to matter for this. So these options we have up here as normal. We've got an orthographic pro projection where no perspective exists. Parallel lines are parallel even if they go off to ever. And that looks weird if you start building an object which is meant to look big, like a building. It will look strange if you do that. But the perspective projection, which sort of solves that problem, I think is going to mess with our camera viewpoint a bit more when we try and build an object where two objects are at certain different distances, but they need to look the same size. That's the whole point of the illusion. So I think the orthographic projection is going to be our friend for today. It would be great to be able to build it in 3D glasses mode, but I think the same problem is going to happen there because it does differentiate things that are further away by changing their size. So let's embrace the illusion of orthographic projection. And basically I want um, a bar coming out here, a bar sticking straight up and a bar going that way so that when I sort of angle it right the vertical one looks like it overlaps the one going flat uh, that way whichever I don't know which way I'm pointing correctly for this but that's the plan and traditionally it's done with a sort of cuboid so you can see the edges and you get that nice 3d solid feel to it it'd be nice to be able to change the sizes of it but well let's 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 have a try at starting I'm going to build it in the sort of positive quadrant well I'm aware that we're sort of looking an angle that might not be ideal. Maybe we should have all the things coming out towards us. Let's let's go with that. So all the arrows are pointing sort of towards us rather than away from us. Uh, 
and now I don't know how to start. Let's build a cuboid doubt this way with a certain length. And if we make that length a variable from the word go, then we should be able to change the size of this. So let's call this L for length between zero and, well, let's use 10 as our sort of starting point. Okay, ooh, that's a strange increment. Let's just go from point ones. Uh, we're not doing anything exciting yet, but let's just try and make a sort of cuboid that sticks out down to here. What's the easiest way of doing that? Let's draw a square and extrude it. Okay, um, I'm tempted, don't know whether you, let's, let's try polygon. Regular polygon needs two points. I think it goes anti-clockwise, so I'm gonna put a point at <laughs> uh, my x coordinate, so it's, it's minus one on the x. I'm aiming for this point here. It's zero on the y and it's zero on the x. And the second point I would like to be the origin. And I want four vertices. Ugh. I wanted it to be standing up. So I guess this polygon needs uh, some sort of... Does, is there a command for the axis or the direction? Let's go back to the polygon. Yeah, there's a direction command. Okay, well, let's try that again. Minus one, zero, 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 zero. Um, four vertices and direction. I presume it means the normal direction, which would be the y-axis. Yeah, but now why is it... Why has it gone that way? Okay, let's just switch them over. This is, I haven't quite got my head around the command. Maybe if I just said, undo, can I undo? Uh, <laughs> if I just said negative Y axis, it might do it. Let's go back to that and let's try changing that first of all. So the, the previews there, negative Y axis. No, it doesn't like that. Um, okay, let, let's actually switch these points around. So it starts at the origin, heads off to what did I say negative one zero zero close that yeah that's the square I wanted that was much harder than I expected it to be and let, is there a prison command there is so I like a polygon and that's the poly one I've just defined they probably need renaming but let's give it a height of L which I've deleted somehow got rid of L okay let's create a slide for L anyway and we'll change those properties for L zero up to ten Point one, and that's what I did before. I must have undone it when I did Control Z. Okay, there's my cuboid. So that's the first cuboid length of my tri bar. Let's set it to ten. We, and the nice thing is that we've got a slider; we can change it later on. Um, so it's like length ten. I've got a width of one. I didn't change the. Yeah, let's have another slider. You know, for the sort of the width of the bar. Let's call it W zero and i probably want this to be shorter but let's let it go up to five go up in point ones don't undo this one this time ben okay that's the width and i need to change my original square to be instead of negative one just negative w that will do it and hopefully that will change in size there we go oh i can get a fat cubit or a thin cubit already like building in the variability at the beginning can be a bit of a pain but it does mean that later on when you build a careful construction it should all update and be super flexible that's at least the point of using GeoGebra to do this. So we might as well start as we mean to go on. Okay. Um, so I want one that sort of starts on the end here and sticks up. Uh, well, let's just try and draw that. So the, the next square I'm going to start with is going to be at the end of the bar. Let's do the square again. So polygon. And the direction will need to be the z-axis. So let's just try and get the same orientation going. Let's do... A point there, we'll do a point there. It's gonna be four vertices and we'll do z-axis. I'm just kind of filling it in backwards. These two points, are the, I'm not sure about it. So one of them needs to be the length of the bar. So let's call that L. And that's probably on the, the y-axis. And the height of it, and it started at the top of that keyboard, so that's going to be the width of the original bar, so that's going to be W. And the next point, I don't know where which side to draw and how it's going to draw it. So let's try doing just one 
one back along that way as I'm looking at it. I have no idea which way to point for this to make sense to you, but I'm going to try and do th that point and that point, and let's see if I can do that. So zero on the x again, l minus w and w. Right, that's the point I was expecting, but it's the wrong way around. So, uh, let's switch them around again. If I just copy this, cut it out, and paste it in there, that is the square I want. And let's do a prism for that. Poly 2, height, length. Ooh, that looks long, doesn't it? Okay. So far, so good. I have two bars. You can already see how if a bar back here, if, it, if this is angled in the right way, it looks like it's going to overlap, but the angle really does matter. Uh, that's confused me now. So it's roughly, don't want it to spin. It's roughly that angle. The angle seems really super sensitive, and so getting it just right is going to be a pain. We're going to have to do this sort of program script it to get the angle right I think and let's just do the third cuboid I'm now worried that so that bar is length 10 but this one's got length 11 because it starts there and I'm confused about actually what the length should be maybe they should all be w minus 1 interesting this is the dead when you're trying to draw an impossible shape it is genuinely difficult to know whether you're thinking about it in the right way. Okay, let's do that. We can reduce the length in a bit. Let's just do the other one. So let's get a polygon. Let's cut, I want the polygon to be, the square to be there. How hard can this be? We've kind of failed a few times so far. I need the direction on the end. So let's just jump to the end and make sure I get this. So the direction this time is going to be the x axis. So that's the sort of normal direction. And I want the number of vertices to be four. And let's work our way. One of them is going to be that weird way around. What the? So the width of the bar is on, so it's negative W to come away from the origin there. The Y axis needs to be zero, Z axis zero, and then negative W on the X. The y needs to be the width, so let's just do w and zero. And there's my square. I think that's in the right place. I think that's actually where I wanted it. I'm slightly impressed with myself, and I pressed return without meaning to. Too excited, and let's just prismify that. That's a verb. Don't at me. Poly three height is. This is where I'm not sure again. L. Uh, it's gone the wrong way. Uh, why? Has that gone the other way? I mean, it'd be fine. I can I can look at it from this angle. That's not what I was intended to do. But maybe that's better because then I'm not going in the negative sense. But I have started on the other side of it. Ugh. <laughs> so many decisions. Okay, let's just go the other way somehow. If I flip the the polygon around, I I hate doing this. Let's do negative L. Let's just go on that way. Which is what I wanted. Now, so I'm worried that the, this one's 10, but with this sort of step up here, that's 11 and that's 11. So something's wrong. And now if I try and line these up, oh, it does look like this kind of, kind of work. That doesn't look like it's an equilateral triangle in the middle though, does it? So maybe. Okay, let's get a way of viewing it correctly. And to do that, I think we're going to have to use a command called set view direction. And I want it to be at 45 degrees down, exactly where everything's sort of, Oh, that was that was pretty close. Um, so it, into the screen at the moment is, uh, I think it's negative on all of the axes because I made all the axes pointing out towards me. So I think it is just the view direction. Now let's do set view direction. Negative one, negative one, negative one. That is the direction I want. I can definitely see though that these two arms are too long. So how long do I want these shapes to be? Maybe all of them need to be length minus one. Let's try that. So the original shape, um, is that the, that's this prism. If I make them all L minus one, I have to change where they start from. So I want the next 
this square that goes up to the z direction that was poly 2 to not be off the plane the xy plane so the z's just going to be zero let's just shift it down to zero on the yeah that looks better but now that's length 10 and actually that one's length 9 uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on let's try L minus 1 on that Yeah, you see well, yeah, maybe this is the effect we need ok let's do the last one then and this is going to be length plus 1 I'll do it. hey that's kind of working that is kind of working Okay, now they're all length nine. I mean, it, it looks right, doesn't it? As soon as I move the, the view around, you're like, well, that's not right. But oh, getting back to that view direction, by the way, you can find old commands because I put my input bar at the top here. I can press down on the input bar and it goes through my recent commands. If the input bar is at the bottom, which I think it is often by default, you press up to see the recent commands. Irritating that. Um, but there's my recent command, so I can get back to that and it animates it nicely. That's good. We need to deal with this sort of the way it looks and seeing the ends here. And we can see that sort of not creating the illusion we want. So we're going to have to do something clever with chopping off maybe this top one to, to be at the right angle. But we're making progress. So this is good so far. And actually, let's just get sort of the view direction problem out by making a button that calls that script. And that's just going to be an easy way to do it. So this is rotate to correct angle or something like that. And set view direction. Wish I just copied this. I'm using two brackets there because one is the bracket for the argument of the function set view direction, one, and then it needs to be a, a point which is going to interpret as a vector, which is fine. But I think that was it. Oh, I just did those two. Hopefully, this button will just do it for us. If I get it wrong, and I can click that and we go back. Nice. Okay, uh, let's have a think about what to do next. Well, what to do next? Is, I think is check that the variability that we built in is working. Which means if I change the length that does change the length of everything that's looking promising and if I change the width it just should just change hello it does change the width but something is off with that bar okay let me have a think about this uh, it was fine when it was one it's also appearing on graphics one here which I'm going to turn off eventually I don't really need it I just want it on the 3d but right if I if I crank it up to two let's just set it to two then I need it to be built off the end of that. So it's the original polygon that I'm building on the flat there on the plane. Is that poly two? Yeah, it's that one. It needs to be at a Y axis of not L minus W. It's going to be just uh, well, L minus W at the moment is eight. So it's that point there. Uh, why can't I think about this so the full length is 10 but it's not a length of 10 over there it's 11 over there <laughs> this is so confusing <clears throat> and if I shift that it's not going to line up anymore Okay, well, let's just try shifting it and then deal with it. So the, let's say the, the length of the full side, I would like to be L, but that's got to consist of the width, which is W and the length of the actual cuboid. So what have I made the length of the actual cuboid? Let's go back to that. I think it was A and minus one. So I think it needs to be almost W. That might fix it. That might fix it. It's actually definition. What? Oh, I've got an A in there somewhere. Okay. Right. And so the other cuboids need to be the same. I think they do. Let's do that. And let's see if we, when we spin it to the right place. Yes. Okay. I think that's that's good. And now things are adjusting. I think as they should. So you can have a tiny width. 
But obviously we've still got the overlap wrong and that's because it's not actually overlapping, it's just this stuff. But this is a nice visualization already of how the illusion works. You have these three perpendicular things and they are buttressed in the way that I've done, which took me a bit of thinking. And if you spin it to the right angle, precisely the right camera angle, you get these things lining up. Now to make it look like they actually join, I think we're gonna have to be a bit clever. And what I'd also like to do is make the faces look continuous. So this face, which is facing in the sort of X direction out there, I've just realized that I'm not capturing uh, my mouse pointer. So I've been pointing to things and it hasn't been obvious. Uh, let me just fix that. Apologies if I've been talking all the way through the first part of this video and my mouse pointing uh, wasn't happening in the edit. I'll try and make sure it's obvious what I was pointing to. I think I'm recording my mouse now. I captured the cursor on OBS. So uh, I was just saying I wanted to get these faces. So this face, which is sticking out in the X direction or facing the X direction needs to be sort of one face. Um, eventually I'd like that to be sort of colored so those faces are the same color and in particular this bit here coming around look, needs to look like one face and to do that i might well I, the, the trouble with jojo is building quite, uh, prisms like this is that basically the the prism has a lot, bunch of edges and a bunch of faces and they are auxiliary objects i think if i show auxiliary objects they're all there uh, and normally you don't really want to see them but i might need to investigate them uh I'd love to be able to spin this thing around as well, but it's, it's spinning around a way such that it still looks right. Uh, obviously just means I can't just spin it in any odd way. I've got to spin it precisely along the axis, which we're looking down. So that's for later. Let's, let's have a think about how to, well, first of all, let's make these opaque so they look the same and do that quick way of doing it. This is the opacity slider. Okay, uh, why are they different colors? What's going on there? Are they just actually different colors? Weird. That face, I want to look the same color as that. Are they, are they just different colors? No. I'm going to turn the auxiliary objects on and then to avoid this mess, I'm going to turn on object type so that we've got points, polygons, and those are the ones I, there's squares, then we've got quadrilaterals somehow, which are the faces of these prisms I made and a bunch of segments. So actually what I might do is hide all the segments something there ah oh, but I need, the segments of the polygon are still there oh no it just needed to be refreshed the color is weird i don't understand why are the segments still visible let's hide my squares those are the polygons let's hide all of those okay that's better i don't know why the colors are doing what they're doing um let's just make them different colors and see what happens so that one's now yellow this one is now blue and the other one is not let me select it there's something weird going on with this one oh, there we go let's make it bright red doesn't like updating that one that's strange but it is oh that was the that was the square sorry huh have i just been changing the properties of the other things no Let's change that. Let's just change this to bright red and see what happens. But now the edges are visible again. What? Those edges, let's just turn all the edges, if I turn them all on and then all off. And we need to check whether Jojo is using the lighting. So in the graphics drop down, um, in projection, no, in basic. You can use lighting. Let's see what that does. If I just make sure yeah. <laughs> now they're all just plain colors. If I use the lighting, you do get some shading going on, but it's not shading them differently. Except it is in the blue. It's a bit weird. I, what I'd like to do is get the lighting. I'll do my own version of the lighting in a bit and we'll play with some mathematical way of getting lighting working. If we make them all the same color, they should all look the same. Let's just try that again. Those three prisms, I just control to select all three, change them all to blue. Let's see what happens. I don't understand why that looks different. But let's not worry about it. If I look at it from the right angle, we start to see the effect, but I've got to get this overlap. So what I might need to do is just define polygons, which are the faces I care about, except that one and that one are going to be different faces. So maybe I do all of them as like a pair of faces. Ah, uh, okay. 
and I just maybe I just find the faces in here. So let, let right, face one is not obvious. Uh, I'm also going to make all of these things only visible on graphics, 3D graphics. Let's take them off that, and hopefully they don't. Oh, they do still turn up there because these quadrilaterals. Oh, that's a mess. Uh, tell you what, let's let's hide them all. Right, they're all gone. So face one is that one. Actually, I'm going to just turn that off. Uh, when I'm looking at it from the right direction, that shouldn't be visible. That one not, is not visible. That one is visible, and that one. So that's. Let's get this this pair of faces. So there's another one over there. But let's find it. It's going to be in the last prism, isn't it? That one. Those two. I want to be the same color. So I might have to turn lighting off. So that one and that one. Right, here's a really neat trick in GeoGebra. To make a list of items that you've selected, you can just drag them. Can you? I'm sure you used to be able to do this. Why is this not behaving? Yeah, there we go. Dragging those two into the input bar. And it makes a little list. It saves a little bit of typing, particularly if it's a long list. Let's call this... Um, these are the faces that point in the Z direction, so we're going to call them Z faces. And it's not... Um, it's not copied them, but it's made a new list object, I presume, which isn't visible. Or is it? No, it's just it's just a list of those faces. I'm not sure what I want for the moment, but anyway, those are the Z facing faces that I care about. So let's do the same with the X and Y. Let's find out which ones they are. So the one's facing out. Let's find one of them. That's facing in the X direction, and so also will be this one. Nope. This one. Nope. This one. Nope. And this one. Yay, those, those two are the X faces. Let's call them X faces. And the Y faces facing that way. No, nope, that one doesn't need one, so it's going to be one of these. <laughs> that one and that one. And those are the ones that when I write, when I'm looking in the right direction, they, they need to sort of look seamless, which they, they now do. That's promising. Now I'm looking in the right color. So those two, drag them up in here and let's call them Y faces. Okay. Uh, what can I do? So I don't know why these aren't visible. They're just sort of lists of shapes. So they're not showing up, but I could, I could say, I don't know, rotate them or something. If I try changing the color, I wonder what happens. They're just not visible. Where, where are they meant to show up? Let's have a look. Yeah, I don't. I wonder if they're not showing up because they're just lists. I'm worried that I'm getting confused by the way GeoGebra builds solids, and if I just built them faces based by like manually, that would have been better. But let's let's carry on working with this. If I just turn on, so. The X face is, is five and four. Let's just turn those two on. And the Y faces are six and ten. And the Z faces are three and eleven. So these are the only ones I really need. You can see that's got the shapes going that I want. I've still got to deal with the overlap. I still like want them to be the same color. Well, I tell you what, let's make the appropriate ones the right color. So uh, X faces five and four, let's make them one color. Uh, let's all, let's stick with blues. Make them dark blue, like they are. Okay. And then the Y faces six and ten. Let's make them like a lighter. I have no idea if that's lighter blue. Bit color vision deficient here. Okay. That's working. Except that we've got this overlap there. Whatever. And then the other ones are the Z faces. The ones looking up three and eleven. Let's make them a different color. See if this works. Can we get more colors? So if you want a better color choice, go to the properties, color. Uh, this is my color vision. Like that. There's a really light blue. Maybe, is that the same as that? No, it's not. Let's go with that. Has that worked? Weird. Is it because it's kind of the face, it thinks the face is the other way around? Let's turn off the lighting, which might be doing clever things that I don't want to do. Okay, right, fine. That's working now, except for the fact that that overlaps. So what I need to do instead, I think just to get the effect, 
And by the way, you can see now they're just this, it's just the shells of the cuboids going on, and that's all I need to make the effect work. But the colours aren't sufficiently different, but I'll deal with that in a bit. So what I, actually I want this face here to have the corner chopped off. Now, how, where do I chop it off to? I think everything is sort of sufficiently consistent that it's just the width marker. It's just like one of my width variable down. So actually, if I set this back to one, it's just going to be one down. If I set this up to 10, I think it's a width of one. Or at least I'm going to put a coordinate there. What's it going to be? A coordinate of uh, along the x of zero. Sorry, along the x. That, I have no idea which ways I'm pointing compared to what you see, but zero on the x. The y, I need it to be L minus W, and the z, I want to be all the way up, which is L minus W minus another W, maybe. Yeah, I think that point is in the right place. It looks like it's lined up. I mean, obviously, it's only there when I line it. And if I change the width... Yeah, I think that's the point. So I kind of want to build a face that just chops that corner off. So let's turn that face off. Which one is it? Uh, four? No. Five. And build a new one. That's dead confusing now. Let's just build a polygon from some points. I'm going to I'm gonna type them. There's probably a better way to do this, but let's just give it a list of points. In fact, I'll just give it some... So first point is L minus W along the X. No, it's on zero on the X. Zero, zero, zero. No, it's zero on the X. It's, it's a flipping egg. I'm not really with it now, am I? The Y is L minus W, and the Z is zero to start. So that's the bottom left corner there. Then, I'm just going to set up brackets for the, the three other points. So then it's the same, but without the minus W. So just L, I think, and zero. Then... I want to go up to the top. We'll do the crucial new one, which I've just called M, by the way. Uh, these points already exist, probably, in there, but I can't be able to go and find what they're called, so I'm just going to type them in and check that they vary correctly. So I still want 0 on the X. I still want L minus... No, just L. But Z needs to be the full length minus W, so L minus W. Finally, let's just call it M, because I've just defined that. Right. Now it's the wrong colour. But that's looking good. I don't want the segments to be visible, so let's just turn those off. And let's make M invisible as well. I don't really need that M to be seen. That's looking promising. I'd like it to be <laughs> opaque. Well, it's called itself Q1. That's confusing, but I made these dark blue. Nah, that's already looking like the illusion. I feel like that's a momentous moment. And that feels tautological. Every moment is momentous in some way. But like, so that's only working because I've just truncated or, or made that corner a trapezium shape so it just lines up and it's nice to see that slotting into place there. Actually, it's really nice to see this spin round. And who knows, maybe I started the video with this or not, but like, what is this thing? It's just three bars in three dimensions. But if you look at it from exactly the correct angle, actually it's the impossible tri-bar, the Penrose Triangle, uh, beloved by all of us and MC Escher in particular. Nice, okay. Um, several other things I'd like to do and I'll just pause and think about how to do them, but things like I'd like to sort the lighting out so maybe I can control how the sides look without Jojo is trying to do the lighting. And I'd love it to rotate in a way that looks like it's actually the tri-bar rotating because that would give the illusion of a three-dimensional object spinning even. Um, movement helps the three-dimensional illusion stay alive. So I'll think about that. Let's do the spinning first. And uh, the bit that's worrying me here is that I've got to get the right axis to rotate this around. So I, wa I want to leave the angle we're viewing it precisely there, which is in the sort of 45 degree down direction. That's what it looks like to me. I have no idea how these pointing things... <laughs> this is hard enough for me to think about, let alone think about how you're seeing it on the camera. Um, but... So I need the axis that sort of runs down through that centre shape. I'm, I'm really not clear what that even that point it will go through i think i'm clear which direction it will go through it's the direction i'm viewing it through but i need to figure out what axis what yeah what the axis point goes through so 
I mean, let's make it just a random point. Uh, this is just on the plane. I could I could drag it into shape. Like I mean, if I put it in the right place, I can get an estimate for where. It, like it should be somewhere around there. Where is n? Negative three point nine seven three point two three. I don't know what logic that is, so it's minus four three. Is that is that correct? But that won't move when I change L. So I need to build it based on L. I don't know why that would be correct. Even if it looks correct. So look how can I figure out? There's gotta be some easy way, even without calculating. That does look like it's correct for that. Why would that be? I feel like there's a Pythagorean triple four three going on. It's distance five from there. Okay, I could go and do some maths, but doing this live is probably going to take longer for me. I want to feel. I feel like I want a geometric way of engineering a center point that's easier for me just to do. So first of all, it's the center of this apparent equilateral triangle here. That's only apparent because it's not a triangle. It's a only a shape made by those bars so that I can't sort of like draw that triangle and find its center or I could well but I have to define that point there which doesn't yet exist that point there so is there another triangle I could find a center of I feel like so um maybe this is easier if I make the width bigger a bit bigger anyway no no no, no. I didn't double click that I did but I didn't mean to the whole shape has got actually it's like a, a, a corner's been chopped off. Um, actually, if I make this back to one, I think it might be easier to see. So imagine adding a tiny equilateral triangle on each corner, and then we've got actually a full equilateral triangle here. And I wonder if I draw that, that from this point of view, it will be look like a right angle triangle, but the center of that triangle won't be there. I'm pretty sure it won't be there. Depends where I draw the triangle, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> I'm not even sure where the triangle. Let, let me try and explain what I mean. I'm going to draw a shape uh, which goes from that point to that point. I'm into negative numbers there, which I think is fine. And the point up there, yeah. So it's at, oh, maybe it's going to be where I thought it was. So let's just zoom out a bit and check. I can. I need the 11 back. I think it's... Wait, is it drawing a triangle for me already? What? Let's try that again. There. There. It will snap to points there. Let's go back to that one. So if I view that from the correct angle... That's not the triangle I was going for. I need to go out another one there. But lucky I should just be able to drag Q up to the 12 point. So that is a right angle triangle. Because of the way I've drawn this, it has to sort of encroach into negative territory. And that might be explaining why this is at 3, 4. That does look like a center. I feel like I lucked out. But that's just a, I want to engineer that point. If I write. That is it. That is also an equilateral triangle when viewed from this angle. And the center of it, I think, is the center of what I need the whole rotation to go around. I'm still confused about this, but we're just going to roll with it. Uh, I think you can just find the center. Is there a center command? A quadric center point. There is. Uh, there's a, a midpoint or center button here. I don't know what. Well, let's find out. If I just click on that polygon, will it do it? Do it on that. There we go. It's made it end as well, and it is negative four three. But it will change as I move this around. Let's find how N is defined. It's called... Oh, centroid. Of course it is. There's a command called centroid, which I'd forgotten about. And I need to make P, O, and Q, which define this triangle, depend on not W, but on L. Okay, and the way I've built it is that P should stay where it is. So, right, let's make Q be... Uh, in the X direction, it's got to go... L plus two, no. Don't know. What just happened? 
Oh, I, I defined it strangely. Let's let's undo that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. Okay, Q is going to be L plus two. I'm not sure if that's correct. In the Y direction, it is negative one, and zero on the height. Not what I expected. I've got to go the other way. Uh, negative L minus 2. Why does it keep changing W? Weird. I'm very puzzled about that. But I think Q is in the right place. If I change L, it seems to go with it. I've got to change O as well before I check whether this is working. So well, let's, let's make this be uh, we're going to do it from the the menu here so it's not a point on the y axis I just want it just to be a point which has x coordinate 0 y coordinate l plus 1 why am I, hmm. I feel like I might have to have w in there somewhere and z 0 is that working I think that's working No, it's not. I see the negative one depends on the width. Right, so all of these depend on the width. Right, let's sort this out then. So P got to be redefined as well. <laughs> I feel like this is an inefficient way to proceed, but hey, live builds are like that. So the X coordinate is zero. The Y coordinate is negative W Z zero. I don't get why it keeps changing W. That's weird. Let's change Q and see what happens. Uh, point Q is defined to be L. Let's do with 2W this time, and that's going to be negative W. Looking better already. And O needs adjusting. Instead of plus 1, it should be plus W. Why did that change W? Weird. That, I think, is defining always the right angle triangle that, when you view it from the correct angle, looks like the bounding equilateral triangle. Let's set this back. I don't want, I don't want this polygon, this triangle, to appear on the graphics normal view. Get rid of that. In fact, I don't want it to appear anywhere, eventually. Ugh. Hide all the segments. Show them all. Hide them all. But N is the centre of that triangle. I think it's the centre of the axis. Anyway, let's get the axis that we can rotate around. Um, line through N uh, with a direction vector of a vector of negative one, negative one, negative one. That's a good sign that I can't see it because it should be right into the camera. There it is. That, I think, if we rotate everything around that, we'll keep the illusion alive. Okay, I'm going to hide P, Q, and O, and N, and the triangle. I want all of them to disappear. I'm going to leave the axis there for now. Let's get it back to the right angle. The axis should look like it disappears. That's nice. And now I hope if I rotate these things up here, they should become visible. Let's, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's try it. Rotate. Let's just do X faces for now. Uh, about, oh, I need a slider for an angle. Let's call it theta. See if it offers me a slider for theta. And I think I need the axis, which is going to be the line I. Don't know if that's the order it wants it. What doesn't it like? Oh, it doesn't like theta going on. Let's use it just... What haven't I used? Alpha? Let's try that. Create a slide for alpha. Yes, please. This is looking promising. Right. I need to update the X faces to not use the X faces, but actually use that sort of truncated, the, the trapezium version. So let's change X faces definition. It should update everything. So what did that new shape get called? Q1. Let's, instead of face 5, it was Q1. Why does W keep changing? I am irritated about that. 
but I do think this is correct. So actually, I'm going to hide all these faces. I'm going to regret this because I can't remember which is which in a minute, but I just get the rotated ones. And I'll, uh, so let's color these something nice. Maybe I'll change my color scheme now. The rotated X faces, X faces dash, <laughs> that's what it is, uh, is going to be colored. I'm going to stick with dark blue. Maybe I'll try and get some other blues and we'll make it opaque. And that is promising. Let's just do the other ones. Rotate the Y faces by alpha about I. I think that looks like it should. And uh, make them a nicer color. I'm gonna, let's first of all make them opaque. And maybe I'll get a proper color choice. This is where I need to think about how color really works. Okay, so I've gone with blue, but I think that's what I used with the other one. What's, what's that? That's violet. Uh, RGB. If I just reduce the amount of blue, that will make it darker. If I increase the others, so tell you what, let, let's make a new color. This is where RGB values come into their own. Let's just make them 20 and 20. I don't know, know how this works. That's a little bit lighter. Is it? So they change color when you select them, which is dead confusing. Right, it's not different enough. Uh, let's try again. If I jump that up to, I don't know, 100. Maybe I should be using a different color uh, system. Oh, that looks better. Can't tell if the selection is doing something funny. If I select it, it's gonna change. Ah, dead confusing. Stop selecting it. Has it gone dark? What? If everything is... Oh, no. Okay. Uh, things are bugging out uh, today, and I'm annoyed about it, but we're just going to roll with it because it's almost working everything else. Let's do the last face set of faces. Rotate Z faces by alpha around I. Shouldn't have used I for a line. It's not the complex number I. And this has to be opaque to avoid that glitching out but that's all right we can make that opaque and I'd, maybe i'll just choose a standard color the cyan looks quite good for that there nice does it all still work as long as it's so i should not let w go beyond Ooh, what amount of the length is that i need to have a think about that I should limit that i don't want it to go to zero either l shouldn't go down to below w because that'll mess it up as well Okay, let, let's go back to our standard 1 and 10. That's pretty good. And it's oh, let's get the angle sorted and spin this around. Animate it, come on. Nice, I am pleased. Because this object doesn't exist in 3D. It looks like it does. I'm going to turn the, uh, the main graphics plane off here. And maybe I'll just make alpha increase instead of oscillate. But the illusion is strong. If you look at it from any other angle, you can see it's just this framework spinning around a particular axis. I like that. It's pleasing. It's pleasing to me. If no one else watching it likes it, that's fine. <laughs> and I quite like the illusion made by the axes here as well. Like it feels in front of the axis and then behind the axis, it's not clear which bits go behind. Maybe it spoils it. I don't know. But if you turn them off, it feels just like a piece of graphics, although if you move it around then suddenly it's not. Uh, it's quite nice too. Do I have the axes on or off? I don't know. I quite like it with it on for now. But having the XY plane there it sort of cuts it off, so that's annoying. I like this. What would be even better is if the shading changes and if the light source is somewhere constant. So let's have a think. Before I get too excited about what I just made, let's carry on and try and sort the lighting next. Okay, for the lighting, I am, I've been thinking of in my mind, something I remember being told by a friend and colleague of mine called Richard Lissaman, who uh, works for MEI, has written all sorts of good maths textbook stuff and uh, also writes games. Um, I'll put some links to some of the stuff he's made. But I remember a lecture he gave as part of a maths inspiration talk years ago, and he's been doing this lecture for a long time. And he talks about how maths is used to make video games, uh, all sorts of nice little bits in that lecture. But one of the particular ones he talks about is how you get lightings and shadow to look right really easily 
using a piece of vector maths, uh, which is the idea that if you know which angle the light is coming from, or you have a vector for the light, and you have a surface, then it basically all that matters is what angle it strikes the surface. If it's bang on, you feel like you're going to get a uh, a lot of reflection, uh, and it's going to be bright. But if it's if it's completely perpendicular, then you don't get any light, and the thing, the thing should be dark. And somewhere in between, it's just the angle. And actually, if you dot product those two vectors, the, the normal direction out of a plane and the light direction, it just tells you the angle between them. Or rather, you get a result which is dependent, uh, proportional to the angle, particularly if you use unit vectors, and then it doesn't matter about the size of the normal or the light direction, you're just going to get the uh, a number which represents the angle between them. And it will be zero if they're perpendicular, because that's how dot products work, which black, dark, and it will be uh, one if, if it's right on. So th that the dot product between the normal vector of a plane and the lighting vector, as long as they're unit vectors, should immediately scale to give you some control over lighting. That's what I want to try and implement. To do that, I think we need, first of all, to stop this spinning, because uh, I'm just going to use that to stop it for now. Uh, and let's just put it back to normal position. I'm going to make a dot. So let's let's get the illusion broken. And I'm going to put a dot on the screen for the lighting. If I start putting it on the plane, I can drag it up. So I, in theory, I should be able to drag this dot around. In fact, that's just a, a point for the light to come through come from and maybe I should always aim the light towards the shape oh now I'm confused again where's the center of this shape to aim at oh I could use that point I defined earlier what was it called n right arbitrarily I'm just going to say the the light comes from r and let's rename r to be something we can remember and aims towards n so actually I need the vector the vector from light to n, but I also want the unit vector of that, so let's call it unit vector of that. Oh, and it's drawn me a little arrow. And you can see, now hopefully if I drag this around, yay, it sort of updates my arrow. And if I click on it, it goes into vertical. I can move the light up and down. Okay, uh, that's not doing anything yet, um, but I have got a controllable position for the light. And now all I'm going to do is update the colors, which I faffed around with for a while earlier, uh, but I'm going to make them dynamic, the colors of these faces. So this was Z faces. It's these these dashed ones here because they include the rotation. Let's try it with the Z first then. Uh, properties of Z faces. So if you go into advanced, then you've got this dynamic color thing. Now, I was thinking earlier about the colors and I'm not... I'm a bit color vision deficient. I've issues. I think I'm deuteranoop deficient or something. Red, green, color blind is what a lot of people call it. Um, it's really hard to describe what it is because it looks normal to me, but apparently I'm seeing stuff weirdly. <laughs> That's not an excuse. There are there are three ways to define colors, at least in GeoGebra and in lots of other graphics applications. I think I talked about this in another video. I forget which one, but um, RGB is the amount of red, green, and blue, and it's a really good way for describing how colors mix uh, and then you can control the opacity with the fourth thing the hue saturation and value uh, is a way of describing i think how things reflect off things I, I feel like that's the one i want to use and hue saturation and lightness is a similar way the wikipedia page is worth looking at maybe i'll throw a couple of images up and links in the description there are different ways of describing color and i think the hue saturation and value the hue gives you the color the saturation gives you the strength of color and the value gives you whether it is uh, full color or black, i.e. how much light is bouncing off it. Because when you see something with full color, it doesn't go white unless you want to actually get some weird reflection on it. Like a red object under a bright light looks bright red, or a red object under hardly any light looks very dark, red almost black. And I think that's what the value... So I'm, I'm hoping the value I could use as my sort of dot product business and I just need to get the colors from the hue and the saturation. So now I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to pick a random hue. Uh, let's just go in the middle. I've no idea. Normally between 0 and 360, I think they think of it as a wheel, but I'm just, I think this judgeable works between 0 and 1. So I'm going to go halfway through. Uh, what's that done? Is that made it blue? Is that by some complete fluke, the same color as I just had? No idea. Let's keep going. Um, saturation one. I don't want like 
the no I'm going to have to rotate the normals as well. So before I can do this, I need the normals that come out of those planes, which are going to get rotated when I start doing that. Okay. Okay, let's make three new vectors, which I'm going to use. Let's call it um, the... We're working on the Z faces, so let's do Z dir for Z direction. Spell it right, man. And that's going to be a unit vector from the Z axis. I'm just going to use the Z axis as my reference point. But I'd like it to be rotated in the same way as the faces get done. So rotate the unit vector by alpha around i. I can see it's put a little tiny unit vector down there, and it does look like it spins. That's all I need. That's just going to be the normal vector for the Z face as it spins. All right, then I think it's all right. Let's check it on this one then. So uh, we'll just work with that. Change the Z faces so that its color depends on that. So the value of do I do it in here? Or do I define it in GeoGebra? I'm just going to try it. Dot is the dot command. Well, they call it Zder with. Do I have a light vector? What's it called? I didn't name it, did I? Ugh. <coughs> you. Let's re let's rename it. Lvec for light vector. Again, with my terrible naming convention, let's let's finish the job now. Surely I've got enough information now. The I'd like the value of it to be dot of <laughs> z uh, and lvec. Does it change? It's changing. If it's right above it, it's quite bright. Hmm. I guess it's aiming towards point N, which is not necessarily the best point to represent it. It's good enough. When L is off to the side, it's dark and it gets better. I, maybe I have to rethink about where this light is actually pointing towards. Let's go with it. I'm going to do the other ones. Uh, well, let's just check what happens when I rotate it. That's the correct angle. The light's coming from here. And if I let this rotate, I need an, I want a button for spin the thing. And use a checkbox. Not doing this in a particularly good order, but let's do uh, a spin button. The checkbox for yes or like if it's either it's spinning or it's not. It's boolean value D. And on the update, I want it to start animation for alpha based on this value I just made called D. I think that, that will just do it instantly. Spin, spin. It's gone dark. Is it going to get bright again? It's gone bright. Okay, I, I think that is doing what I want it to do. Like so, when it's away from the light, it is dark. Don't know what happens if the dot product goes negative. All right, let's not worry about it. It's working. <laughs> it's working. Let's do the other ones. Stop spinning, thanks. Uh, right, how did I do this? I need the xdir then to be a unit vector of. Oh yeah, I was going to do the other way around, but I need to rotate it as well. So let's go back and rotate it. The unit vector from the x-axis and rotate that by alpha about i. And let's do wider as well. Let's see if I can get it right there. So rotate the unit vector. I wonder if the unit vector is already built in for the x, y, and z axis. But anyway, this is working, so don't ask too many questions. Alpha about i. No, that's no, 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 no. It's not i. Yeah, check my input. Damn straight. Should have a little axis rotation going on. Yeah, there they are. That's kind of nice. And uh, now I'm ready to, to dot them. So the Y faces in the advanced, I'm going to change it to hue saturation and value. It's got hue that at the moment. What? Don't know what I want there. Let's just try that. Oh, it's gone green. <laughs> I don't know how the hue thing works. Let's just make it close to the other one. So let's go 0 0.6. The other one was 0 0.5. That's quite light blue. Do I like that? I don't know.
Okay, uh, still and did, didn't do the crucial bit here. The value is going to be dot wider with lvec. Okay, does that work? Kind of. Maybe I should make them all the same color. So make them all the same hue, and then the only difference will be the lighting. Maybe that's the way to do it. And then I don't have to worry about what color. So make them all hue 0.5. Oh, I don't know why that keeps popping up. Okay, but now they, they should be the same color, but just with different lighting on them. They you could, There must be a place where they're the same color. I don't know if that's what I want, but let's do it. It's a kind of a, a greeny cyan. I guess cyan has value 0.5. Oh, sorry, hue. <laughs> 0.5, don't say value when that's a different thing. Let's do the last one. The X face is uh, HSV, hue 0.5, saturation 1, value dot, this time X, -der, which I think I have with LVEC. It's cool. I can feel like I'm moving a light source around. And if I just leave the light source there, let's look at it from the right angle. So that's. That's annoying because it looks like two of the faces look the same, but oh, let's just go with it and spin the thing. Oh, Pleased noises are coming out of my mouth. I like that. It feels genuinely like an object changing under light and shadow. But actually, it's not a real object. It's the illusion made by that object spinning around that axis. I quite like the lighting game thing there as well, the dotting the normal of a plane with the light direction to get the an appropriate shading. Let's tidy up a bit. Um, all those vectors need to disappear probably. The light vector is good to keep, perhaps. Uh, let's hide them. L vec doesn't need a name though. N should probably disappear. Maybe I should make the light dot yellow. Can make the background dark. Oh, now I, now I can't see it. Do I want to make the background different colour? Maybe I do. Background, let's make it sort of a dark grey. Certainly gives a more impression of light coming from. Oh, it's a thing of niceness. Why does that. Why did the light disappear there? Why is it vanishing? Ah! Is it because it's selected and it changes colour when it's selected? <laughs> I don't get how these uh, these colours work. Let's uh, make it big. I could actually put a sphere around it, but I can't be bothered. Maybe that dark grey is the selected colour, so let's just change the background graphics to be something slightly different, a like darker grey perhaps. Get it moodier. There we go. And that means I need the light vector to be a bit more obvious. Maybe let's make that yellow as well. Why can't I move it? <sighs> so frustrating. I oh, know it's going. Okay, I I think I've been messing around with this enough for now. Let's like let's just report back on what we've done. We've got this object which looks great. Uh, it's being lit by a real light source. It's a real three-dimensional object. Uh, particularly if I turn the uh, axes off, it's not cutting any axes, but uh, depending on where I put the light, it looks different. And you know and I know that that object is impossible. And the only way that is existing is because if I spin around, you can see it's just these framed uh, little bits of uh, planes that are making the shape. But if I look at it from the correct angle, we have Roger Penrose's and MC Escher's lovely impossible triangle. Uh, I'll have a think about whether there's anything else we need to do for now. Okay, the one other thing I've noticed is that I feel like there's a little glitch uh, which is spoiling the illusion very slightly here is overlapping. You can see the clipping box is stopping that happening. But you see that's definitely not quite in line. So something is off and I, I feel like it might be a, if any segments are still visible that might be doing it but they're not visible still. Um, so Q1 was the shape there and I feel like that's just slightly blurred. So I'm going to change its properties. Ah, line thickness could be doing it. I don't know if the lines are visible but let's do it for all of the shapes so it's actually 
that, that, and that. I wonder if I can change the properties of them. Yeah, change the line thickness down there. That's better. So I've lost all the edging. There was some line thickness going on. The, the uh, And I think... Oh, I looked at it from the back there. By the way, if you view, um, if you do the command set view direction and it's already on the right view, it'll do the negative of that. Um, and this is looking from the back, and you can see something weird is happening because we've just we're looking sort of inside these objects. It does look quite cool, but it's not the effect I'm going for. Let's just check what happens when I spin it now. I like it. Maybe I like it better with the axes on. That's enough for now. I think we've made the object I was trying to make. Uh, and there's all sorts of tinkering we could carry on doing, but I think we should stop for there. Um, if you have enjoyed this, then check out the rest of the videos on my channel where I'm building crazy JoJibra ideas. One of these days, I'm going to branch out into non-JoJibra build. I want to try, for example, uh, the Manim software that Grant uses on his 3 blue one brown and a lot of other people use really nicely. Uh, but I think we'll stop there for today. So if you've uh, enjoyed this, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.